Traveling through Hoenn has been interesting, to say the least, but while the story has failed to grip me, I've caught what I can along the way, and I'm very excited to jump into the post game to find out what it really takes to complete this living Pokedex. Let's stop wasting time and let's jump back into Pokemon Omega Ruby. After becoming the champion, I headed downstairs to find my dad has canceled on my mom who got them tickets to a meteor shower, so they decided to give the tickets to me. You know, it's a pair of tickets. Why don't you invite that little cutie May from next door to come along? <laughs> dad, absolutely not. Oh, well, just like that. Look at this beaver, man. What? Let me catch Pokemon. Star show held at the Moss Deep Space Center will provide the best view of the shooting. Ooh. Stars from the center's lofty viewing deck. Much better. I remember going to see him with your dad 11 years ago when they last passed by. I'm 11, so... Must have been a magical night, Mom. Okay, I guess I gotta go freaking invite May. Huh? What do you mean, huh? I'm at my house. What are you doing here? Outside, I'm greeted by a very strange woman named Zinnia who babbled on about nothing for several minutes as I started to consider that the worst could be yet to come. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to go on like that. This is gonna be hell, isn't it? This is gonna be hell. Oh, God. Until next time, then, bye bye What purpose did that serve other than to delay my life? <sighs> come on, May. We gotta go to the freaking star show together. I found May and her mother talking about how Xenia had just literally broken into May's room and stolen her keystone as she conveniently muttered, Petalburg's next. <gasps> Dad's in Petalburg! I guess I gotta go to Petalburg. When can I catch a Pokemon? Come on, Goopy. Gotta go save my dad. Idiot. Goopy dropped me off and I checked on my dad, but everything seemed fine until I stumbled upon my best friend in the whole wide world, Wally, who was fighting off Courtney's attempts to steal his keystone too. Beaver man, what, what? Take it from Wally, I don't care. Take whatever you want. I'll be taking yours first, give me the keystone. Why don't you lick a butt? How about that? Oh, a single camera up. I'm shaking in my boots. You better kill it in one hit or I'm gonna be irate. Thank God. Ooh, that could have been dicey. I took Courtney down for the 100th time and she stormed off, leaving me alone with my BFF. What, Wally, what? What in the world's going on? I gotta protect my mom and dad. You go protect him, Chief. Oh my God, what? Hello, is that you, Beaver Man? It's me, Steven, have you been doing well? No. Steven, now in possession of a cell phone, asked me to meet him at the Devon Corporation in Rustboro, and I realized that if I was gonna catch any Pokemon, it wouldn't be any time soon. Let's go to Rustboro then. What is the point? What could this possibly be? Oh my god, I bet it's gonna be so much talking. Hey Steven, I'm sorry to say it is not happy news that brings us together. Oh my god, what? Steven, I am over it. I am over it man. I don't care what you have to say. Steven took me upstairs to talk to his father, President Stone, and I dipped further into insanity as he had a completely irrelevant side conversation with Steven that lasted at least five minutes. What is going on? Tell me the thing. I'm afraid that I'm planning to start in a rather long and quite heavy topic. Oh my god. I suppose it should begin. Let me first take us back 3,000 years to the days when this story began. Feels like it's been 3,000 years since you started talking. In the longest and most convoluted way possible, President Stone informed me that a meteor is headed to Earth and that they need a meteorite shard to help stop it. My patience with this game was growing thinner by the second. You want him to go and get that shard for you? Shut up, Steven! Of course! Stone told me that the shard was in Granite Cave and sent Stephen to Moss Deep Space Center to do something, but I didn't pay attention and was already halfway out the building, begging God to forgive me for wasting my precious time on Earth with this dialogue. All right, well, I gotta go to the Granite Cave. A lot of errands to run. Why not, huh? Into the Granite Cave. Oh my God. At least it's a Pokemon, at least it's not dialogue. Of course, Zinnia was already in the granite cave talking to herself like a crazy person and as she approached me, I started to inch closer to the edge. We do seem to meet an awful lot, Beaver Man. The world's ending! Can we speed it up? Are you also interested in this old painting? No! Or are you here for the other? For one of the meteorite shards that can serve as a source of power for the legendary Pokemon that lives in the heavens above? Yeah! That! Now let's do it. Give me a good taste of everything and you and your Pokemon have to offer. Oh my god. Can I catch Rayquaza? Uh-oh. 
We're in trouble. Guess what I'm gonna do? Everybody take a wild guess and bring it in despair. <laughs> and we're gonna fight and we're gonna mega evolve and we're gonna use draining kiss and that's just what's gonna happen. Use draining kiss. <clears throat> My kisses are fatal. You stupid giant blue dragon. The kiss of death? <laughs> Great. I killed Zinnia. Zinnia was easily defeated and she gave me the meteor shard before spewing a long, incoherent riddle and finally leaving. At last, I was alone. Oh. Were you able to find the meteorite shard that we need? Yeah. If you were able to secure it, could you hurry back to us at the Moss Deep Space Center? Okay. All right. Yeah. Steven, no problem, Chief. Anything else you need me to do? Steven is the neediest human being I've ever met. He's literally never done anything on his own. Everything that he's done is... Just, I do it. Back at the Moss Deep Space Center, I found Steven with Professor Cosmo just hanging out, not doing anything, while I ran around the region dealing with an actual crazy person. Professor Cosmo laid out his plan to stop the meteor by shooting a rocket into space, not to blow up the meteor, but to create a wormhole and send the meteor somewhere else. Based on our theory, we can at least guarantee that we'll be sending it away from our planet. Well, what about other planets? I feel like we're playing God here, Cosmo. However, we've realized that we will need more energy than originally anticipated to control the link cable property. But with one more meteor shard, oh my God, of course. As Cosmo was gearing up for another long, unskippable section of dialogue, Zinnia showed up, and it was at this point that I pretty much just kind of gave up altogether. It's a snap of your fingers to repeat the sins of the past. Worse, if what I overheard is true, this time you're about to commit an error more abominable than before. Just say what you mean! Why do we talk in riddles like we're a troll under a bridge? I want to catch Pokemon. And that is it. I don't want to learn about the deep lore of this game. Xenia told Cosmo that she didn't like his stupid plan for like 45 minutes while refusing to provide any alternate solutions and then she just left. Yeah, in order to complete the war problem, we need another meteorite shard. No, this time we need one for Meteor Falls. Oh, okay, great. Okay, we're in Meteor Falls now. While I'm in here, I might as well catch a freaking Soul Rock or Lunatone. I can't remember which one. One of them's in here, and I didn't get it last time. Just seems to be a bunch of Zubats. All right, well, I guess I gotta go up the waterfall. Huh? Come on, Lady Snips, even though she's dead. Come on, Lady Snips corpse. Where am I going? Is it this way? Oh, holy sh... <clears throat> Sorry about that. I just got really super duper angry. Mm -mm. I do not want to battle anyone. No siree. Oh, yes! A soul rock. I'm gonna use an ultra ball on you. Whatever. Did I catch it? Bingo, baby. That's a soul rock. Raise your hand if you're ready for this game to be over. Did I go the right way? Are you kidding me? Uh, hey, Steven. I'm so happy to see you. Beaverman, we have the meteorite shard. He did something. That's good. Honorable lady you see before you is a descendant of the ancient... Draconids. Oh my god, when the music changes, you know it's gonna be so long. Since times long gone, Hoenn has repeatedly suffered great disasters. Then maybe we should all move to a better region. The old dude went on a 90 minute monologue about these ancient draconoid people or something, and honestly, at this point, I was completely tapped out of this story. How anyone enjoys this game is truly beyond me. Oh my god. God, this is too long. I don't care. I don't care. I'm over it. I'm skipping it. I can't handle it anymore. Yep, people, Pokemon. I, I don't care. This is a nightmare. Going back to Rustboro. Okay, great. I'll go back to Rustboro too. Back in Rustboro. Here we go. Let's go to Rustboro now. All right, back into the Devon Corporation. Aya wa wa ya wa wa. What? Oh my god. The incredibly clumsy scientist who cannot put his pants on without my help has been bullied out of the Devon Corporation by not one, not two, but three separate Team Magma Grunts that I had to defeat, truly cementing the fact that nothing I do in this game actually matters. Apparently Team Magma stole something called the Dimensional Shifter. I don't know what it does, but I guess it's important because this guy was losing his mind. What shall I do? What would you do? What shall I do? I don't know. Why don't you tell me to go fly somewhere? They must have headed for the Moss Deep Space Center. Ah, uh, then I 
guess I'll go to the Moss Deep Space Center now. I headed to the Moss Deep Space Center, took on five Team Magma Grunts before walking upstairs to find Courtney there talking about something that made absolutely no sense. I teamed up with Steven for a double battle that he made last five times longer than it needed to. Then Xenia showed up, and between the Keystones, the Dimensional Shifter, the Link Cable, and the Draconid people, I was completely brain dead. All of the excitement I had to catch Rayquaza was sucked away with every new word of dialogue, and I had no idea what I was doing or why I was doing it, but I knew that I was just ready to be done. Put together the keystone they've gotten in their base. What is going on? I can't. I can't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm clicking A. I'm just going to look up where to go. Okay, I go to the Team Magma hideout. <laughs> like, I, I can't do this all day. This is the most dialogue I've ever been exposed to. Hey, by far. Let's go to their secret hideout. Why hasn't it been taken by the cops? Excuse me, guys. Just not gonna do anything, I guess. I have to navigate this again? I, I don't remember. I just kind of walked around. How do I... Where am I going? Oh, God. Dang it! I'm suffering through this game. I don't remember where to go. What do you think? I remember where to go? Are they here? Oh, no. Hey, intruder person, you know the rule. When our eyes meet, we gotta have a Pokemon battle. How about I stab you with a real-life knife? Huh? How about I stab you? Is this where they are? No, this is a pointless room. They got a vending machine. That's good. In case anybody wants some cheese nips. Is it here? No. What is happening? This one? Uh, oh. I want to save. The conversation between Maxi and Zinnia was so unimportant and incoherent that I remember no aspect of it, even after having played through the game and re-watching the footage several times while editing. I don't know what happened, and I don't care, but I was one Steven phone call away from insanity. Oh. Beaverman, are you all right? Yep, I think we need to meet up at once to discuss what we should do next. I'll be waiting at the Space Center up on 2F. Do hurry. Let's go to Moss Deep City again. After that, just fun time. I'm back in Moss Deep. Hello, lady. She's like, man, this kid really coming in a lot today. Hey, guys. I'm back again for the, I don't know, fourth time? I don't know what Steven said, apart from the fact that I needed to go talk to Wallace in Sutopolis. My resentment of Steven and his never-ending laundry list of tasks began to grow into white-hot rage, yet I, his unwilling servant, had no choice but to oblige. Well, I guess now I'll go to Stupopolis City. Why didn't he just tell me this over the phone? Ah, mm, my chest, it burns. He's in the Cave of Origin? Like, of course he is. Hey, Wallace. And an old man. The old man next to Wallace served only to extend the conversation longer and longer. As my vision blurred and my brain turned to mush with every nonsense word, Wallace mentioned something about the Sky Pillar. The Sky Pillar is in fact an altar built for the ascension of Rayquaza, that legendary Pokemon long said to be the protector of the Hoenn region. Only the Draconid people know how to do it. Well then why am I here? Then why don't we get the Draconid people to do it? As if I was void of free will, I followed Wallace's directions to the Sky Pillar. He had undone the seal and stood in front of the door, not letting me pass until I defeated him in battle. I don't know what he was trying to prove with this pointless slaughter, but I had no choice but to participate. Champion of Hoenn, you who should exhibit the most graceful of art in battle with your Pokemon, I would have you show me your true strength. Mm, okay. Let's kill Wallace until he is dead and also no longer alive. Oh my god, he has six Pokemon. I mean, Mega Evolve and use Thunderbolt the whole time. Yeah. That's just what I'm going to have to do, I think. Boom. Dead. Boom. Dead. I'm going to kill the Milotic. 
And I did. Boom. Boom. Dead. Dead. Wallace, dude. Thanks for the riveting battle, Wallace. What were you trying to prove? To defeat me, a descendant of the ancient Stupopolis people, and even when I was holding nothing back, I used one Pokemon, and it got into yellow health one time. Wallace said a bunch of stuff that made no sense at all before taking his six dead Pokemon home and getting the hell out of my way as I, a thoughtless husk, limped into the Sky Pillar. Is this like a puzzle? Oh no, great. So you came for me, thanks for that. You're welcome. I didn't really come for you, I just am kinda here. The paintings that cover the walls of this tower. They're the tales that have been passed down by my ancestors, the Draconids, for thousands of years. Well, I hope you and the Draconids are just doing just fine. And now I'll pass that history and lore on to you. Thousands of years ago, in the primal age, long lost the world's overflowing and I don't care. I don't have to. We all know what happens. Yep. Yep. You'll tell me the ne the first chapter? Did she just say the first chapter of her tale? The first chapter? Oh my god. It's finally time for chapter two. Oh my god. The meteors and there was a rainbow and an emerald. It was Rayquaza. He came down. And that's it. Chapter two is over. We've only just left the starting line. There's a long way yet. Don't fall behind now. How many chapters are there? Now our tale reaches the best part. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Something about mega evolution. Yep. Okay. There's got to be the rule of three, right? There's three. There's got to be three chapters. And how did the story end? After being transformed by the wish of the people, did Rayquaza save them from disaster? No. He murdered all of them in cold blood. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. I can't do it anymore. I cannot read anymore. It just all progress is just halted. It's just a bad game. Yes, a clay doll. I'll take that. Draconids, they did some stuff. All of them are dead except for me. I killed them. Boom, bop, bam. Come on, I need this right now. I'll take it. At last, we reached the final chapter. Great. I am eager to hear the rest. Oh, okay. The meteor would be great in order to the great calamity, right? Plan to avert Rayquaza, right? Could strike. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I, I'm so compelled. With my last few remaining brain cells, I arrived at the top of the sky pillar where I was able to put together a few words of Xenia's hour-long monologue where she revealed she would finally call upon Rayquaza. Finally, it was time. That is my, it is our duty. Okay, I'm in. Oh my god. Ever since I was a little girl, I've always turned my eyes up to the sky. I turned and looked up there so that my tears would never ever fall. What about you? Have you ever had to do something like that? Never. I used to watch the stars like this all the time. Cool. Together with Aster. Cool. I loved her with everything I had, but I still lost her. Um, uh, Aster's like your child. I don't care. I want to see her. I want to be with her again, my sweet Aster. I will, won't I? With this, just a little longer. What? <sighs> Have we sat here all day? Mentally exhausted from trying to comprehend this world around me, I simply collapsed. When I woke up, things only made less sense. Summoning Rayquaza at the top of the sky pillar sounds like a hard thing to screw up, but after another monologue, several poems, and a dance number, Rayquaza appeared, and at this point, I didn't even care. Xenia said hundreds of more lines of dialogue as me and Rayquaza sat there staring at each other until eventually, I was actually allowed to do something. Beaver Man, Rayquaza's trying to build up power for itself to take you on, use everything you've got, you've got to master it. Okay, okay, oh, shut up, shut up, shut up. Um, I guess I'll just fight it. After all that, I'm like brain dead after all that went on. Karyashi, okay. There it is, it's got airlock. I won't kill it with a dream kiss, it's level 70 Rayquaza. Perfect. Don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Okay, great. The classic Cronjangle rock slide should do pretty good. Yes! Get in the ball. Make it easy for me, Rayquaza. Great. Okay. It's getting really fast and really strong with all these dragon dances, huh? Come on. Yes. 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 Oh, yes! That was so easy! Oh, yes! 
Oh, thank God. We gotta Rayquaza, boys and girls. I caught Rayquaza, my all-time favorite legendary, and I felt nothing. I stood there as Zinnia said line after line of dialogue until eventually challenging me to a battle. Whatever. Why not? Oh, yeah. Freak. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna immediately Mega Evolve, right? Yeah. I think I will. Let's see it. Yeah. Gosh, that's a good looking Pokemon. Dead. <laughs> Ooh, Tyrantium. Nah, we'll keep battling. I don't think I'll swap out. I'm just gonna be using Dragon Pulse a lot during this fight. Yeah. You hate to see that. You hate to see it. Noivern. Yeah, we'll keep battling. We'll keep battling. Yeah, I wanna see this Dragon Ascend. Ascent. Oh! Goes up high. Oof! You hate to see that. Salamence, obviously, I'm gonna keep battling. Salamencenite. That thing goofy looking. I kinda like it though. Get it. Hey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wish I could see it in action. Just like I'd expect of you, Beaver Man. Yep. What about the Meteor, though? You know, cause that's still happening. That settles it then. Beaverman, you should be able to beat that meteoroid that's approaching the planet. You and Rayquaza together. Okay. What am I gonna like, ride it up there? Oh my God, I'm gonna ride it up there? Are you serious? I'm flying it into space? This seems um aggressive for a little kid to be doing, but like I'm into it. Was it worth all the talking? No, no. But it's pretty cool. As Rayquaza sped into the meteor at the same speed that a rocket would have, a two-dimensional triangle emerged out of time and space, and behind it was an alien Pokemon made of DNA. Now this sounds insane, but it honestly made more sense than anything from the last two hours of gameplay. With the end in sight, I grabbed a Master Ball and took on Deoxys. The best Pokeball with the ultimate level of performance. Yeah. After all of this talking and this two and a half hour long stint to get this Pokemon, I am gonna master ball it. The end. Yeah! I got it. That's a Deoxys down. God, that was so much talking. It's done. Oh, not done yet. God, they're gonna have more. I bet a hundred people are gonna talk. Of course, it couldn't just end there, as I was forced to watch every minor character's reaction to the events, and it was Steven and his final hour-long monologue that truly sent me over the edge. Steven, 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 shh. Hey, Steven, for once in your useless life, shut your mouth. I, you just, just say, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't talk right now. Maybe I should just be quiet. Maybe I should just give it arrest. Oh my god! I took a shower, took May to the stupid Moss Deep Center for the fifth time that day, and I finally made it back home. Beaver Man, what? See you tomorrow. Hopefully not. <laughs> Don't choke on your dinner. Well, that was awesome for two Pokemon. At this point, there was absolutely no more story elements, and I was truly free of Steven's shackles and could finally start catching. My first plan was to take on the Reggie Trio, the last remaining legendaries. Reggie Ice's little tomb was located on Route 105, and with so much time wasted on this game, I traveled there quickly. Route 105, got it. I'm here. Don't you dare try to battle me. Oh, let me put Lady Snibs up in the front. It's Snibs in time. Is this it? I gotta do a bunch of other stuff. I did not know that. Oh, I've gotta open up the ruins. Oh, crap. I didn't know I had to open up the ruins. This has ruined my evening. Am I right, guys? Yeah, well, turns out there's a whole other tomb I have to go to in order to face the Reggies that was on the far end of the rapid-filled oceans on Route 133, because of course it is. Route 132, okay. Aw, oh, great. Jeez. All right, I gotta go to the bottom. Nope! Ah! Oh, I hope that was right. Nope, no, no, that's not the bottom. That's not the bottom. God, a lot of trainers, aren't there? Okay, I think I missed it. Oh, my.
god. All that for nothing. Why is this... Mm. Let me fly to Route 132 again. Why does nothing just go here and get the thing? No. no, no, no. I don't trust this guy. I don't trust the way he's moving. I'm just getting in the water. If this was a mistake, then that's a mistake I'm willing to make to avoid a battle. This sucks. Pass through the western or southern gap. Got it. And then... I don't know. I'm just going. Uh, sucks. Yes. 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 God bless. I'm in the depths. Okay, the sealed chamber. Oh, no. Do I need a braille alphabet? I'm not ready for this. D. I. G. Dig. Do I have to have dig? Okay. Well, do I have dig? Of course I don't. Oh, where do I get dig? Why is it so complicated? For the Reggies? My never-ending list of errands continued on as I headed to the Fossil Maniac's house to get the dig TM, and my Twitch chat, most likely noticing my steady decline into insanity, decided to give me a heads up and let me know I would also need a Relicanth and a Whale Lord, because of course I do. Let's catch a Whalmer then! <gasps> Got one. What is it? It's a Whalmer! First try, baby. Getting the ball, because I need the Reggies. Bingo, baby. That is what you want to see. I needed one anyway. I actually need two. So you know what? Let's catch another one. I caught a second Whalemur for the decks, and through the magic of some intense off-screen grinding, <clears throat> I was able to quickly evolve it into a Whale Lord. Level 40. What? Whalemur's evolving? Finally! After hours of off-screen grinding, it's time to evolve Whalemur. God, that thing big! I headed back to the undersea cave where I used Dig and Relicanth and Whale Lord to solve the Reggie's stupid sacred puzzle and grant me access to the other tombs. If it sounds stupid, that's because it is. Oh! Bingo, baby. It sounded as if doors opened somewhere far away. Let's hope so. Let's freaking hope so. That was an ordeal. Now I could go back again to Route 105 and try to catch Reggie Ice so long as there isn't another stupid task for me to complete. At the Island Cave. What does it say? Oh my god. Stop and wait unmoving as time passes by you twice. This is fun. If this is your favorite Pokemon game, I want to have a fist fight with you. Okay, wow. All right, that was the longest two minutes of my life. There it is, Reggie Ice. Oh, let's catch it, little icy boy. Let's catch Reginald. Reggie Ice, I got something for you, and it's a lady snips false, uh, false swipe, excuse me. There we go. Use ancient power all you want, lady snips can tank it. Ain't no problem to her. We're gonna just whittle your health down to just to nothing. Here we go. And now I'm gonna bring in Despair. Come on in, Despair. Let's get this freaking game over with. All right. Best case scenario here, boys and girls. Let's th let's sling some balls. Let's put some balls in this Reggie Ice face. Make this easy on me, please. Please. Oh, of course not. Like Scoob, get in the ball. Get in the ball. Oh, zoinks. Is this gonna be it? It's not even wiggling. What is going on today? Go to sleep. Shh, 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 shh. Despair. Do not wake him up, okay? We're gonna throw a ball. Try to catch him. Oh my gosh. Come on, get in the ball. You want a treat? Oh, come on, little ice boy. Come on. Oh. Okay. Man, this thing crazy. Oh, we got a wiggle. Ah, two wiggles. Two wiggles. But that was it. Not more than two. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a Reggie Ice. Reggie Ice? Freaking Reggie o'clock. With Reggie Ice down, I quickly headed to the desert on Route 111 to take on Reggie Rock. All right, I don't quite know where this temple is, but I know it's in here, and that's all I got going for me. This is where I caught Goopy. 
No, this can't be it, can it? Oh, I'm lost. It's among the dunes. Ah, there it is. Yes. Found it. All right, let me quickly translate this. It says... Right, right, down, down, then use your strength. You got it. Bingo, baby. Reginald Rock. Look at him. Looks weird. Should have saved, but I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Good. So nothing I do won't kill it. That's confirmed. But I have 40 false swipes, so if it comes down to it, I can do that 40 times. Another false swipe, just and doing about four HP worth of damage. I'm just gonna keep nicking away. I don't trust myself not to murder it. And I'm using items and stuff, like I'll heal up, like I'm not ashamed. There we go, bought us some time. Yeah, I'm very against items in battle, but I'm also against doing this more than I have to. You know what I mean? Oh, his defense won't go any higher. Good, that's good, that's good to know. Oh my god, I'm losing it. Nah, just get hit. Here we go. Go to sleep and stay asleep for a very long time. 5, 6, 10, 20, 30 turns. Really just rest up is what I'm telling you. Let me go ahead and just tell you how the end of this battle goes. You're in a Pokeball. Like, it is what it is, is all I gotta say. Yes. Okay. One wiggle. It woke up already? What in the world? I was asleep for one turn. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Thank God. Oh. I got Reggie Rock, baby. I'm so happy about it. I could just scream. Yahoo! Who's with me? I can't keep it up. I don't care. The final Reggie was resting on Route 120, and Lady Snips was fiending for a catch. Gotta get our last. Reginald, the third and final Reggie. Yes! Gotta be in the ancient tomb. All right, let me quickly translate this. Um, aim to the sky with love and hope and time. Well, I know what to do. Fly! Oh, maybe it's here. Okay. Got it. First try, baby. All right, there's the little cave. Reggie Steel. This is my favorite. I think this one looks pretty neat. It's like a little ball. All right. Guess what? False swipe. Oof. Okay. Iron defense. Great. Got another one of these. I'm thinking a cron jangle rock slide, which is a physical attack. Won't kill it. Please don't. Not even close. Perfect. Now what about an iron head? Will that kill it? That's better. That's kind of, that's more, that's more speed right there is his iron head. Reginald Steelington of the Steelington fortune. Look at his little fingers. I love how you can't tell it's asleep because its face is just seven dots. Oh, okay. It's going to be one of these, isn't it? Great. It woke up. Good. Get in the ball. Get in the ball, sleepy head. Who's so sleepy? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's such a tease. I'm really going through my Ultra Balls here on you, okay? Uh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm honking. No. Please go to sleep. No, what in the world? Ugh, there's a 70% chance it hits. What? 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 Infuriating. That is infuriating. And he's gonna wake up in like two turns. God bless. Oh, thank God. We got him. Oh. Its body is apparently hollow. No one has any, any idea what this Pokemon eats. I think it eats my misery. With Rayquaza, Deoxys, and the Reggie Trio, I was now completely done with the legendary Pokemon, and it was time to turn my attention to the rest of the decks, which was looking very empty. Luckily, the first on the list was Poochiana, which it can't be that hard, right? First thing we need is a Poochiana. <laughs> Let's get to catching. We don't need a Zigzagoon. Get that thing out of here. Is that so much to ask for a Poochiana? You gotta be kidding me! Okay, am I, is this how we're really gonna start today? Yeah, 
What is happening? We need a pooch. Oh my god. You gotta be kidding me, right? Mom, I still haven't found one. I'm trying! Sorry, talking to my mom. This is gonna be one. It's gotta be, right? That isn't what I want. You stupid, insolent game. You troglodyte. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> I nabbed Poochiana and headed into Petalburg Woods where I grabbed two more slack offs and looked for another cascoon and silicoon. I need a silcoon and a cascoon, because I need a beautifly and a dust dogs. Oh, I ain't any a shroomish, unfortunately. Ugh. I don't want to hit it. I'm just going to try and catch it. I don't want to touch it, because it's going to give me, like, ultra paralysis poisoning. Got it. Bingo, baby. I'm so close. I can taste the end of this game. I can taste it. Yes. A cascoon. The evil version. Mmm. <laughs> Get in the ball, you naughty little boy. The cascoon. Get you one of them ram trucks. Ah, oh, now Zig's a gun. Get you a silcoon. Would it be easier to evolve a wormple? I don't want to do that. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have such a fun life together. We're going to do a bunch of fun stuff. I'm definitely not going to put you in the box and then never use you. <laughs> nope. Mm, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oops. Well, too late. On Route 116, I grabbed an extra Ninkata, stumbled upon a Talo, and grabbed another Skitty before heading into the Granite Cave to find the ever-elusive Nose Pass. Okay, so down here, I have to just smash these rocks until I find a Nose Pass. On the off chance that I even find one. Oh my god, this is gonna suck. Ah, oh, what is it? No way! Second try, baby. Let's go. And that's a nose pass. Boom. I've completed the whole nose pass line, which is, it's just one Pokemon. On Route 110, I grabbed an extra Electrike, a Wingle, and a Gulpin before I went to Route 117 to catch a Roselia. Next up was Carvana on Route 118 for some good old-fashioned fishing. Gonna get locked in. Yes. This is gonna be one right off the bat. I feel it. Boom, baby, let's go. Rounding out the Pokedex, woohoo! I felt myself actually having fun as I headed to Route 119 following a distant memory about a Pokemon under a wooden bridge. I remember something about this bridge and I fish under it. I don't quite remember. Ain't nothing biting over here. Ain't nothing biting. Not a daggum thing. What we got, give it to me. Yes, a fee bass. And that's that down. Golly, ain't nothing like just catching Pokemon. This is the best part of the whole game. I grabbed a second fee bass and landed a big old whopping Sharpedo that absolutely kicked my ass. Get in the ball, Sharpedo. Oh my god. And Lady Snips is dead. Great. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna use hypnosis. You better land. Oh my god. Land the hypnosis. No! Gotta be kidding me. I did bag and tag the next Sharpedo, and I felt the serotonin start flowing as I organized my boxes. Maybe I could do this after all. At the fiery path, I grabbed a second Numel and got another Spoink on the Jagged Pass before heading back to Route 111 to grab two more Trap Inches, another Cacturn, and the Root Fossil. Next was Route 121 to look for a Duskull, but I ran into something much worse. Okay, so I just need a Duskull. I need two. Ugh, God. I'm trying to catch it. Save me a little grinding. Stupid Pelipper. If this goes in, I'll be really happy because then I'll be done with this stupid bird. Oh my God, they're so hard to catch. Ah! Just like get in the ball, Pelipper. I hate it. I hate it. Please. Oh my God, I've... Ah. I hate this bird. Okay, please get in the ball. Oh my God, did it heal? Are you shh? <laughs> Sorry. I've had such a hard time catching this bastard. Please, please let me be done with this bird. Oh, thank God. 
Oh, sweet relief. I grabbed the big stupid ugly Pelipper, another Shuppet in a Duskull in Mount Pyre, a quick trip to Mount Moon for three Bagons, a coastal fishing trip for a Love Disc, and a trip to Lava Ridge to chat with an elderly couple. Where's there an old couple? A couple old people. What about you, old lady? Here, I have an egg. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take the egg. Boom! Got an egg! This game's long and arduous campaign had such a hold on me, and as I found freedom from its constant interruptions, I also found myself joyfully making progress, seeing my PC box fill up slowly but surely. More accomplished in the last hour of gameplay than in the first 15 hours combined. Only a few mons remained in the dreaded Shoal Cave with its very annoying real-time title schedule that has never quite worked out for me. Okay. Here's a show cave. Um, I'm gonna say a quick prayer uh, that it, we're at low tide, okay? Okay, I think we're in low tide. This is huge, because uh, I had to change the time on my freaking D- Oh, God, Pokemon are in here. Ugh, I hate Pokemon. This is how the game was meant to be played right here. Ooh, oh God, is this a puzzle? Oh no, I'm never getting out of here. Nope, get in the, nope, ah, damn it, get in the, nope. Okay, I got it this time. Watch. Nope. I don't have it. Okay, I got it this time. Ah, okay. And there's a snow runt. You're mine, you stupid TP looking shivering idiot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, got a snow runt. Oh man, it feels good to be back in the game. I think I'm the king of ice puzzles. Okay, I'm just gonna walk around up here. I don't know why I need to do all this ice crap, all this ice bull crap. I ice skated my way into two snow runts, a sphiel, and two celios before leaving and preparing for the most dreaded task so far. Apparently, Steven has a Pokemon waiting for me in his house in Moss Deep City, and I could only pray that he wouldn't be there to waste my time. I took my... Oh, Beldum? Yeah, oh, that's it? Wait, Beldum's just in here? Oh. Well, that was easy. All right, got a Beldum. Thank God I didn't have to talk to Steven. That was excellent. With Beldum caught, I was nearly there. The next thing I needed were the Deep Sea Scale and Deep Sea Tooth to evolve Clam Pearl into its trade evolutions, which apparently could be found at a cafe in Mauville. This cafe, unlike any I've seen before, requires you to purchase your food, and while you wait for your order, you have to fend off attacks from other patrons, and those that are victorious get your food. I only cared about getting to the ramen station, where successfully paying and eating your food could result in a prize of a Deep Sea Scale. All that's left to do then is sit back down and eat. What do you think? Easy, right? Nope. It's very complicated and threatening. And do I pay? You know? Excuse me. You're getting in line now. They're probably already sold out. Sold out of what? Sold out of what? Hello? Is this the ramen bowl? Hey, no cutting in line. Oh, God. So I've got to get the, f the sub? I don't want the sub! A thousand dollars?! Your meal will be ready in five turns. Please have a seat. Oh, come on! I don't want to do this! Hey, stay away from that chair. I saw it first. Dude, why don't you eat my butt? I paid a thousand dollars for this sub, and I know damn well I'm gonna eat it. Oh my god, this sucks. Are you dead yet? Great. Why don't you take this seat from my cold, hard claws? Chair is fading away. Yeah, shut up. Can I eat my sub now? Beaverman, check the buzzer. Just three turns until your meal is ready? Oh god. This is a, a horrible establishment. Where's my sub? Where's my sandwich? Can I have it now? Is that my buzzer going off or an earthquake? Your buzzer is buzzing. Time to get your food. Great. Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's your village sub combo. Okay, I don't care. I'm not real. So, oh, and you give me a nugget worth well over $1,000? This place is going to go into the shithole. All right, so if I leave and come back in here, will these effers be gone so I can do the freaking Mallville ramen bowl? Oh my god, I don't need your help. Buddy, I get it. I guess the trend is dying out already. A lot of customers waiting to order. Well, that's because nobody wants to eat here because it's really expensive and dangerous. This is Magnemite croquettes you want. What do you eat, Magnemite? Sick. You're sick. $5,000. One trip to the cafe was enough to just suck the joy out of my soul. After two unbelievably long double battles, I was finally able to access the ramen bowl. How many turns do I have to wait? 90? $10,000? This better give me eight turns. Great. This better give me the tooth or, or whatever. What is it that I need? The tooth. Yeah. Three agonizing, 
unyielding and wildly lengthy triple battles later, and I was able to get my food. Is that the end of the thing? Of this miserable, miserable expedition? And it should give me the deep sea tooth. And if it doesn't, I will adult grown man cry. Mm-mm-mm, I am hungry. You're late, so the noodles got all soggy. What do you mean I'm late? Excuse me, where's the... Where's the thing? What did I do wrong? So if I don't do it in eight turns, I don't get the freaking thing? I did that for nothing? I did that for nothing? Hours of my life, I will never get back, and I came up empty-handed. Eventually, I did get my hands on the Deep Sea Scale and Deep Sea Tooth, which meant it was time to jump into my copy of Alpha Sapphire. In order to save myself the agony of playing any more of this game than I have to, I made the decision to use the same save file from when I first bought the game back in 2014, which means I can easily trade over my Kyogre, named Ethan, and my Latias, named Glutes. The Sapphire version exclusive still remained, so I needed to assemble a team of elite Pokemon from my distant past. First of all, I need a team. I need to assemble a team. All right, this is my old team. This is Slaughter, a Swampert named Snot Attack. This is Fart Machine. This is Rat Boy. And this is Trash Sack. Okay, very important members of the team. I taught False Swipe to Fart Machine and headed into the wild. I grabbed a low tad and made my way to the Granite Cave. This is where I need to be to find a Sableye. 20% chance. All right, Sableye, you little purple bastard. Where are you? Yes! Climb your little purple butt into that ball. I caught Sableye, grabbed a Plusle, and on Route 117, I stumbled onto a Meryl and grabbed an Illumice before catching a Lunatone in Meteor Falls and heading to Route 114 in search of the last exclusive Pokemon, a Slithering Seviper. Come to your daddy, little slithery little snake. Little slipping, yeah. Hey, little Sviper. <laughs> Go ahead and false swipe this little boy. This little girl, excuse me. This lady. Poison tail, nice. Cool. How about next you get in the ball? You know, we can just boop, boop, get you in the ball. Cut out the metal man. Make this easy on me. Okay. Way to go, fart machine. Okay. And three shakes and the click. There we go. And that's a Sviper. With the exclusives caught, I headed back into Omega Ruby to embark on the trade of a lifetime. I spent like 30 minutes catching dozens of random Pokemon and began the process of moving over all the Alpha Sapphire exclusives, which of course included Glutes, Ethan, and Snot Attack. The next three trades were our trade evolutions, which included getting Feebas to evolve into Milotic and finally being able to evolve the stupid Clam Pearls. These Pokemon are hideous, and I do not know why evolving them is so complicated, but whatever, I got them. Okay, Clamp Pearl is back. Maybe something happened to it. <gasps> yeah! I don't know which one this is. Which one is it? Hunta- no, Gorbis. Got a Gorbis. Call your mama, let her know. Did I do it right? Should be a Huntail. Yes! I did it right! That is what you want to see. The final trade was a big one. Using an action replay, I was able to access a Jirachi event on my Alpha Sapphire cartridge, and in a somewhat relieving but also unsatisfying way, I traded Jirachi over to Beaverman. That's a Jirachi. And that's our mythicals. There it is. That was easy. I restarted Alpha Sapphire and traded over a Trico to round out the exclusives. With everything I can catch having been caught, I just needed to fill in the gaps by breeding. I bred all of the Pokemon that there were only one of, and I also bred the Sapphire exclusives in order to make sure all of the Pokemon had the correct original trainer name of Beaverman. After a few dozen trips to the daycare, thousands of steps, and a very submissive ditto,
we finally filled in the gaps. The thing about Hoenn is that there are very few Pokemon that can be found in the wild fully evolved. Of the 134 Generation 3 Pokemon, 40 of them cannot be caught in the wild and must be evolved, far more than any other region I've faced so far. This means that I would have to evolve every single one of them. Using a mix of switch training, rare candy spamming, and mashing the A button, I slogged through the true final step of this process until eventually, I had completed the entire Generation 3 Living Pokedex. All Pokemon are present and accounted for with the correct original trainer names except for the Event Jirachi and Kyogre and Latias, which saved me an entire second playthrough of Sapphire, a concession I'm more than happy to make after the monotony and pain this game has brought me. I normally can tolerate the campaign and muster through the story with the hope of endgame catching and breeding to keep me excited. However, this game had this strange concoction of the annoying hand-holdy aspects of the newer games, yet it had none of their streamlined quality of life improvements. By the end of this game, I found little joy in completing the Pokedex, but I did find immeasurable joy as I transferred all of the Pokemon out of Pokemon Box and into Pokemon Home, knowing that there will never be another Hoenn Pokemon for me to catch. Just a Pokedex filled with Pokemon that have traveled years away from their original region and made their home in the cloud, commingling with the others and hearing of their fun adventures. I know that my Johto and Unova Pokemon are happy here with me because in Gen 2 and Gen 5, it felt as if we all worked together. Our journeys filled with fun mechanics that made catching Pokemon unique and challenging, as if I had to earn their respect before they agreed to join me. And it all crescendoed into this big satisfying click as the Pokemon were each added to the decks. But it felt as if Hoenn was fighting against me every single step of the way. As if these Pokemon were clawing away from me like an animal being trapped and transported to the zoo. Every new Pokemon brought with it RNG-filled errands that made their eventual capture feel like agonizing relief more so than it did a satisfying accomplishment. And I wonder if my Hoenn Pokemon feel the same way, if they will miss their home region. This I do not know, but I do know one thing, I won't miss it one bit. Enjoy your home in the cloud because you're never going back. Hoenn is the worst region. Thanks for hanging in there with me and I'm excited to jump into Generation 6. I'll see you in Kalos.